How's it going, everybody? It's your favorite apostates. I, of course, am McKay. And I'm Jordan. And we are back. Um, I was debating on whether I should show my tattoo, so I'll just uh, give you a little look, please. Gasp. Gasp. I don't know if you could see it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's my first one. Uh, I was a, a wee little lad, and now I'm a man. I don't know. Bit of news. A lot of you have been asking, and uh, we are here to deliver. Our audio is now officially up on Spotify and is going to be up on Apple Podcasts. There's a couple more hoops that you have to jump through with Apple. Um, But if you want to listen to just the audio only, like a lot of you have been asking, check us out. You can look us up. It's called, we called it Embracing Apostasy with Jordan and McKay. Maybe we need to add that to our YouTube channel. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, you can listen to us in audio-only format. That way you don't have to keep the stupid YouTube app open or what have you. Um, but you will miss out on some of, the, some of the visuals. So we're going to shift. Bear with us. We're going to try as best as we can to be able to describe things to people so that if you're just listening, you also kind of get the full picture of what we're talking about. We're getting our some of our previous, uh, our previous YouTube videos updated and put in the podcast, but... You know, keep in mind that we did primarily shoot them as a YouTube video, so yeah. you might be kind of confused if you're listening to old episodes. So, um, yeah, we've got a couple ones up already, so if you have missed some in the past and you're like, oh, I just want to listen to the audio, then you can do that. Uh, but from here on out, I think we'll probably just put every single one up on uh, the podcast, so check it out. My nose itches. Sorry. So, yeah. You guys have been asking us that since we started, so we finally got around to doing it. Finally got around to it. Uh, Today, we are going to finally, I told you it was going to happen, revisit some more um, Mormon Mormon influencers. influencers. And today also has a bit of education that we're going to be talking about. Um, These influencers, um, some of them we may come back and do a deeper dive on them, but we particularly picked them, picked on them, I don't know, however you want to call it, um, because of how people perceive the way they dress and how that might be incongruent with Mormon beliefs. So we're also going to be talking about the Mormon garment or magic underwear, whatever you would like to call it. Um, The Mormons call it the holy garment of the priesthood or G's or all kinds of stuff. So let's review because this is probably one of our most common questions that I think when people ask about garments. Once you understand what they are and what they look like, I feel like the next thing tied to Mormon influencers is people start to ask, well, some of them very obviously don't wear them. And why do yeah. some of them just not care and not wear them where other people, like the majority of Mormons, have to and feel like they have to wear them? So <clears throat> this is it my own opinion but if i were to throw out there a percentage of how many mormons i believe wear garments and how many of them choose not to it would be like a 90 10 for those wearing them um people we're we're talking people who consistently attend their church meetings because here's the thing is mormon influencers there's a lot of them and they're out there in the sphere and they gain a lot of attention and so when you are Mormon and you're an influencer and you don't wear your garments, it creates this kind of disconnect um, with what people kind of how people come to us with questions. So they're like, you guys are always talking about like Mormon magic underwear and this type of shit. And they're like, I follow a bunch of Mormon influencers. And I don't see any of that. And so you see how that kind of shifts <laughs> the narrative and kind of works in the church's favor because the church is constantly trying to appear Like, we're not culty or crazy. Um, And the garments are kind of in line with being kind of culty. Yeah. And people are like, a lot of times they'll be like, oh, you wouldn't make fun of other religious garments. No, because I've never belonged to another religion. And also, I am not aware of any other religious garment that's worn under your outerwear. Well, and this is a religious wrong. garment. This is the cold garment. That's my opinion. But Oof. anywho, so this is kind of it causes confusion, and the church as a whole isn't going to condemn that on a like very public like news conference type level. Yeah, um, because 
a lot of these Mormon influencers generate positive PR for Mormonism. And uh, a couple standard deviations above the average person worth of tithing. Yeah. Yeah. So as we dive into more of these Mormon influencers, and today we're talking about garments and things specifically, but we want to reiterate, since it's been a minute since we've done a video like this, we want to reiterate why we talk about Mormon influencers and why I'm sure people think we bag on them, but why we bring this to your attention. Because at the end of the day, um, social media influencers, these influencers make money off of you. You. Um, if you follow them, if you support them, um, if you give them views, yeah, you use their affiliate links, you look at their ads, um, which is kind of unavoidable if you follow them. Um, and so all of these things are contributing to supporting the church. And if you remember (laughs) the church is not a healthy place to be (laughs) for a lot of people and does a lot of bad things. And, you know, the first thing that comes to mind for us is tithing. Because remember, if you're Mormon and you're actively Mormon and you're going to the temple and you hold the temple recommend, which is what you need to get in, then you have to be giving 10% of your income to the church. It's literally a question in the interview. Are you giving 10% of your income to the church? Plus, they hold tithing settlement at the end of every year to make your so you can declare that you have given faithfully your 10%. Like they give so you the list of what you've paid more for the than year. just the one time that they're asking you. So they're very, <laughs> they're very they specific want you about to this. pay. Yeah. They want you to pay and they want you to pay for your fast offerings as well, which is supposed to go to the needy, but it just goes to the bishop's storehouse where they can gatekeep welfare. So there's that too. That's on the video for another day. But here's the deal. You support them. You support these influencers. And even if they're not outwardly problematic, even if, you know, a lot of the ones that we're going to talk today aren't terrible people, and that's not what we're trying to insinuate. But when you publicly belong to an organization that actively harms people, you're going to be called out for it. Yeah. And it might be the min- like the minority of people that are calling you out for it because there's a bunch of Mormons who follow these people and that's fine, but we're still going to call you out for it because at the end of the day, if you support them, you're supporting the Mormon church. Yeah. And here's what we mean by why that's problematic. Just a, a big, for instance, 2008 California Proposition 8 and briefly says eliminates the rights of same sex couples to marry. The, it was a big deal. The church had a big grassroots movement to, you know, pull to pass this proposition. And in the words of one of the Mormon apostles, he said, Jeffrey R. Holland, um, in a um, little Q&A section, said, institutionally, not a single dollar, not one red cent of money from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints he used the full name so you wouldn't know, went into Proposition 8. Well, a couple years later, I think it was only one year later, actually, uh, they actually spent $190,000. So that sounds like a lot of red cents there, Jeff. Um, Lobbying so that Proposition 8 wouldn't pass. Yeah, so you can't really know exactly what they're spending this money on because they are willing to lie about it. These are a, a guy who the Mormon population would call the elect of God. And he, he lies. So another problem for another day. Yeah. We've talked about that a lot, but keep in mind that there's a, there's this misconception because the church is a 501 C three organization. They're considered a nonprofit. They don't pay taxes. Okay. Um, There's a misconception with a lot of people that if you're a nonprofit, then you can't lobby. Like, you can't lobby politically. You can't get involved in politics. And that's false. (laughs) That's a completely false notion. You can lobby, and we'll throw up a little image here that kind of breaks it down for a little bit, but you can, as a nonprofit, you can lobby up to a certain point. And it just can't be whatever the thing says, 25 or 20% of your expenditures or 
how much money you make or whatever. Yeah. So you can. So there's nothing stopping the church from lobbying. So this whole idea that nonprofits like the church can't lobby is false. Um, so they can, and they absolutely do. <laughs> and so when you directly support these people who are paying tithing to the church, then you are allowing the church to lobby against gay marriage. And you're allowing the church to lobby, especially here in Utah at the local level, where like 90% of the politicians here are Mormon. You don't think that makes waves? So that's the yeah. thing. And it it still actively happens here when Utah was considering passing recreational marijuana. Um, the church got all up in a tizzy about it and paid a bunch of money and talked about it in church. Do you remember that? Yeah. They encouraged people. Um, we were going to church to at that vote time, against it. Weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Because they talked about it in church. <laughs> They read a statement. I don't know if the statement was from like Utah leadership or if it was nationally, but they read a statement in church from the pulpit that said we would encourage you, you know, to read about it and actively participate politically. But we encourage you to vote against this proposition or law that would have allowed um, recreational marijuana use. So the whole idea that the church doesn't lobby for things or isn't, you know, involved in that way inherently false yeah so that's fun um that's just a little tidbit on why we're talking about this um but it's just kind of a a little extension of what we really want to talk about which is the garments oh and And, oh okay before we go into that i just (laughs) thought of this last thing that's important because the mormons are going to come on i know they will the mormons are going to come on here and they're going to be like the church spends so much money on charity and that's where all the tithing dollars go to because they're super charitable false wait a minute the church does spend money on charitable organizations that's part of that's kind of like the whole uh, point. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how they Isn't pull it? tithe payers in is when you, the n- number one thing that comes up when you confront Mormons about tithing, um, they're oh, like, Mormon helping it helps hands. people. Yeah. And it, they wear the yellow shirts and the vests and they go and they, and they do rush national disasters and national, to help. And, yeah. Natural disasters. Great PR. And we're not shitting on the church for doing things that are helpful. It's great. That's what they should be doing. That's what they should be doing. They're putting money out there. They're donating to organizations, and that's great. But keep in mind, that's all a really good PR move <laughs> for the church when they're spending, you know, when they're donating dollars to charity. But here, here's the problem with this is, one, we had the whistleblower complaint that came out either, was it last year? 2019. 2019. When that came out, we found out that the church has over $100 billion that were tax exempt um, in an investment fund which is literally attached to the church. That's $100 billion. Yeah. They're, they have an investment. At the time, that was more than Jeff Bezos, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They have more. The church, think of Bill and Melinda Gates. The church is above Bill and Melinda Gates. Just think about that for a moment. So <laughs> they have a ton of money, and they have an investment fund, which means they're getting all of that money from stocks like Tesla. They cashed out on the GameStop stuff. The squeeze, they yeah. cashed out on that shit and so they're invested in all these things and they're taking all of this money from it and they have a hundred billion dollars sitting in an account not doing anything and it's tax exempt we could probably solve world hunger with a hundred billion dollars less but the church isn't going to do that so that money sitting in a fund can't be touched it's investment and it's all tax exempt so The last point I want to make about that was in that article from the Washington Post who broke that story, um, one of the church members, one of the church reporter, like the high up PR people that they talked to said the church said in a report last year, which would have been 2019, that its charitable arm had spent $2.2 billion in assistance since 1985. But they don't they don't publish that. 1985. That's almost 40 years. And two billion. That's. 2% Two percent of what their investment fund is worth over forty years, and we're not—it's not sitting at a hundred billion. We're talking over, like we don't. This was a whistleblower complaint, so we don't Two even years have. Ago. Yeah, that—that's not even counting the the growth of this year and last year. And they've made—they were invested in a bunch of tech stuff. So when COVID hit, boom, their investments yeah. went through the roof. Um, so this is why we talk about this <laughs> is because I know it's like elaborate but it's like a domino effect all of these things are interconnected and your money regardless of whether like our money we contributed to this yep we contributed to this for a long time 
with our own money. And so they mislead people into thinking that they're spending this money charitably and they're doing these, they're doing all kinds of good when the reality of it is, is that's not true. Maybe they're doing some good with that money, but it's pretty limited compared to the money that they have. Yeah, for real. So that's why we talk about this. So there's your little disclaimer about why we do this. So let's jump into Garmies. Garmies. <laughs> I made that word up. I don't, I've never heard it before, but I was like, we got to get the Garmies out of the That's closet. That's so cute. I love it. So we can do it. Let's start off uh, talking about, uh, we'll give an overview of garments after we talk about these influencers who have received personal revelation that they don't need to wear garments or, or whatever. So let's just talk about a few and then we'll go from there. Okay. So you guys, a while ago, um, those of you that follow us on Instagram, we asked about the Mormon influencers that you follow, um, the ones that stand out to you or that you know of, um, that you've seen before, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. So you guys sent us a bunch. Um, There were a lot of repeats, so I took the repeats. One of the more recent ones who hasn't really been around for a long time, but recently gained a lot of popularity on TikTok is... um, Taylor Frankie or Taylor Frankie Paul, um, as she's known on Instagram. So I don't know how this came to be, but she got on TikTok and this whole, we'll throw one of them up, but there was this whole trend that they're trying to display as like hot Mormon moms on TikTok. Wasn't it like hashtag Mormon milf talk or something like that? Yes, yes. So, and I want to be clear as we walk through these influencers, I'm not trying to shame anybody No, for dressing I've, a certain way. I've said it before. <laughs> if you don't allow your, your religion where the founder was married to teenagers, plural, to dictate uh, the underwear that you wear, I'm all for that. That's honestly. great. That's great. We're about it. So. But again, we go back to that thing of we're misrepresenting what it means to be a Mormon. What it means to be Mormon. And the reality of, and we're going to get into this in a minute, of how it's not just a, I get to make a personal choice. Like, yes, they are, but there's consequences for that choice. Yeah, and if you are the general public, you you are not going to be that 10% of non-garment wearing Mormon. No, you're not. So Taylor went viral on TikTok. Her videos have seen millions of views. um, And she's kind of made like a bit of a joke of it on TikTok, like the video that we're going to show you. So, yeah. She's made kind of a, because people comment on her shit and they're like, how can you be Mormon? How can you? So you can still, by all means, follow the teachings, participate, do all those things and sure, consider yourself a Mormon. But wearing the garment, especially if you've been married in the temple, is a huge tenet of being a Mormon. And if you're not doing that, you can be denied some of the most important privileges of Mormonism. So she's kind of made a joke of it in her little friend group. There's a lot of them who are all like Mormy and Instagram influencers. Richie. Richie rich Rich, um, have all done the same. And so there she wears, and this you'll see this with a lot of Instagram influencers is they'll post like they're, they're like going to church with their family on Sunday always appropriate really different <laughs> generally <laughs> always super appropriate but like the photos we're gonna throw up here um crop top not mormon appropriate this dress oh yeah don't look hella not Mormon appropriate ever yeah no and it's way too short to cover bottom garments you would be able to see the cap sleeve in the top and clearly she's not wearing anything underneath because of the cutout pieces in the middle so not anywhere even near yeah. mormon appropriate 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 <laughs> yeah so hey where where what you want but definitely your bishop would probably gasp if he saw that exactly so that's what we're saying is and we'll get into the why of that in a minute so she's an example of somebody who on the whole purports to be mormon but doesn't think it's important to doesn't to feel like the garments are a personal choice or they don't have to dress like that because it's not as necessary as they personally believe Okay, then there's other people within the Mormon circle, probably considered one of the most popular, which is Rachel Parcell and her whole like the Parcell Scala sister empire um, is the best way I would put it. 
Rachel Parcell started a fashion blog way, way, way back when. Um, just like super chill. Lots of Mormon moms were doing it at the time. Um, but she started a fashion blog and it started gaining traction. What's way, way back? Like, I want to say it was like 2000s or 2010s? 2012. And um, it was just like a little thing. Um, didn't appear like she was super invested in it. Didn't appear like it was going to become anything. Um, picked up a bunch of speed. Got like started getting sponsored and partnering with Nordstrom and, you know, Nordstrom Sheesh. sale event. Ooh, you make big bucks. So she started partnering with fashion brands. She started, she just kept up with the blog, kept up with the Instagram, started gaining traction. Um, and it, she built basically an empire. Um, she has a, she, she's a millionaire, total millionaire, um, has her own brand of extremely expensive clothing, um, has partnered with Nordstrom. She's rich, rich. Um, and so is kind of the little circle of family members that she's in. But the interesting thing, and I'll, I'll read you what she said in an interview when she first started, when she talks about Mormonism. So she said, from the very beginning, I showed pictures of my temple wedding. I had a link to mormon.org on my blog. I didn't want religion. I didn't want my religion to be something nobody knew about me. I like to do subtle hints. I'll take a picture in downtown Salt Lake and talk about going to women's conference. I'll be cuddled up watching general conference and I'll tell my readers what I'm watching. They'll ask more about it and I'll either respond or my Mormon readers will do it for me. I work with national brands and they don't want me pushing politics or religion, but I feel like Mormonism is such a lifestyle and not just a belief on Sunday. My whole life is based on it, so it's naturally integrate naturally integrated into what I do. In New York, I tell people I'm from Utah, and they'll ask, "Are you one of those Mormons?" I can't believe you wear stylish and wear your stylish and wear normal clothes. Uh, that's also why it, when we talk shit, people get their they get into a tizzy because they it's it is a lifestyle, honestly. Totally, it's. It's like a personality type. Almost. When you're wearing garments, how can it not be? Like, you literally yeah. have to wear them all the time. So I'll throw up this first picture. I don't know how old this is. I want to say this is, like, super old back when she first started. But this is her in front of the San Diego Temple, which the, is considered the Disneyland Temple. The giant princess castle. The big one. So initially, um, very Mormon. <laughs> Yeah. Like everything that she posted was very modest. I mean, going back to the 2012s, there was a lot of ugly things that were in style back then. I I personally participated in these horrible fashion trends. But <laughs> so things have kind of changed. But the interesting thing about Rachel Parcell and kind of her inner circle is Rachel Parcell, I would say maybe a little more than half the time wears things that are appropriate. Like, I'll throw up this picture. Mikhail threw up this picture of her. I think this is her mom. Um, I would recognize this building from anywhere. This is the Salt Lake Temple that they're standing in front of. It's where we got married. It's where we got married. Appropriate dress. They're going to be on Temple Square. So, yeah, it's probably going to be. It's going to make sense it's to be appropriate. Be appropriate. Um, and then she has her sisters. There's, like I said, there's like a whole empire of them. So she has a sister. Um. You'll see when we throw this up. But this is also in front of the Salt Lake Temple. Um, you notice that the difference in a lot of Mormon wedding dresses is there's a cap sleeve. Comes up super high, has a cap sleeve. When you're getting married in the temple, your dress has to be appropriate or they won't let you wear it in. Um, mine was extremely appropriate, but not wide enough. And they still didn't let me wear it in. Notably, it also has to have sleeves, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. It has to have. Long sleeves. I mean, it doesn't have to be long sleeves, but it has to be enough to cover the garment. So it doesn't have to be long sleeves, but it has to be a cap sleeve. Hmm. So, because like mine had long sleeves that were see-through, but I still had to oh, cover yeah, it up it to here. Um, and this is the same you'll see in this picture. Um, it's modest. And then I'll throw up a different picture of the same person. A little bit of a different attire. Uh, describe that. I just realized we're probably doing a shitty job for the listeners. Sorry. <laughs> Short shorts. Um Definitely not compatible with garments. Off the shoulder, top, also not compatible. She's on the beach, so this might be a more casual outfit. Sure, whatever. I don't care. She looks cute. Um, and then further into this empire, there's Rachel's sister, Emily. Um, and there's a lot of them in this picture. Like, this is like the empire style photo. It's like very, 
I don't know what's the word very intense they're all wearing black I don't know if this was like a Halloween thing it's like a entourage or some <clears throat> like, like an like entourage a, photo a promo from for some sort of Bravo TV show exactly so every single one of these people in this photo aside from the two men in it are not wearing clothes that would be Mormon appropriate except for one um, in the back and I'm not sure which one that is I don't care about these people so <laughs> other names but aside from the woman in the middle who's wearing a dress that covers you know most of her it's a little on the shorter side but you can hike up garments you know you're not supposed to um but including rachel parcel none of these are mormon appropriate none of these are compatible with wearing garments and most mormons would say these are not appropriate no these are yikes okay and then you have the other end of the spectrum with family vloggers that we've talked about before. We've touched on a few of them. You guys bring them up all the time. One of the most popular ones is Ellie and Jared. Um, we don't know a ton about them, but I looked up Ellie. We'll throw up her picture here. This is like, if you scroll through her entire Instagram, you would be hard pressed to find anything that isn't Mormon appropriate. Like in the photo we're putting up, she's in Times Square and she's covered from head to toe. It's also winter. But in the majority of her Instagram photos... There's not that's anything. Not Times Square. That's Rockefeller. What the hell ever? Seriously. <laughs> um, you'd be hard pressed to find anything that wouldn't be like garment compatible, like other than swimwear. And the argument that most people will make with swimwear is you don't have to wear your garments with swimwear with yeah. a swimsuit. Like that's like, that's not a thing. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Yeah. However, um, I don't think there's anything in the handbook or anything, but culturally it's not really acceptable to wear a two piece that doesn't cover the midriff. So you can wear a two piece if this little front portion here is covered. Um, culturally in the church, bikinis are typically a no, no, um, no, no, definitely a no, no in, in my word growing up. No, you did not do that. Nope. The girls that you would just wear one piece. You wore be one better piece. Off. End of story. Um, there is actually, in our interview with um, Kyleen, Exmo TikTok star Kyleen, she talked about, I think she was in, being in Young Women's at the time or was involved somehow. Yeah. And they were doing no, a- No, she was a leader. She was a leader. Yeah, and, oh shit. Um, one of the leaders told one of the girls to go home because she was wearing a two-piece because it would be distracting. Uh, um, we're talking about a child here. <laughs> So you're the pervert. You go home. So that's kind of the cultural vibe. Yeah. Around swimwear. Um, and no, it shouldn't matter. I don't. It shouldn't matter. Girls should be able no. to wear what they want, what they're comfortable with, period, end of story. But the problem is that Mormonism doesn't allow for that. And if you're making a personal choice by not following those things, then it, your life and your style isn't compatible with Mormonism. Yeah. And you're advertising to the world. That it is, even though it's not. And it's misleading. Yeah, it's misleading. Because people are like, oh, they don't wear that crazy shit anymore. Like, that's... These people are so more... Like, so normal. They can't be Mormon. Like, maybe yeah. Mormonism is changing with the times because they don't have to wear these crazy things anymore. Yeah. Not true. Not really. And it's evolved over time, obviously. But so fashions, like, a lot. So it's it's not really like it's keeping up with the times. It's being led by the times and immodesty has always slowly. been around that's not new <laughs> yeah okay things have advanced over time and obviously immodesty in the 50s is different than immodesty now oh yeah but it's always been around but mormons make a conscious choice to dress the values of mormonism because you're kind of forced to and if you're we'll get into that in a minute but anyway so some of the family vloggers like eight passengers you won't find her yeah. wearing well, anything inappropriate. Related to Ellie and Jared, so yeah, that kind whole family, family. You won't really find anything like that. Um, I feel like the majority of the older family vloggers, like Bonnie Holine, um, won't wear things that aren't compatible with garments. Yeah, like the Gen X or the Mormons. older Mormons. Yeah. I feel like the older Mormon women don't typically participate. I mean, Rachel Parcells older, and she does, so that's not really a fair statement. But <clears throat> I feel like the the diehard family vloggers and less of the Instagram influencers, like the YouTube family vloggers, are more yeah. appropriate. 
Depending on the case, yeah. obviously. But that's kind of a it's trend a that I've noticed. Basis, but, Especially but yeah. if they make Mormonism like an active part of their YouTube experience. Like eight passengers. It's avidly um, part of yeah, or what they North post. and South and, yeah. and things like that. Very obvious. Whereas the Instagram influencers, some of them will try to hide it and be subtle about it. Which to me, if it's in like it, Mormonism is incompatible with your brand. Yeah. End of story. And so uh, you can't, like, Rachel Parcel can't wear modest clothes all the time. Which is fine. Which is fine, but it's incompatible. Uh, It's because it's incompatible with her brand. So that's a little sketchy to me. Um, You guys bring up all the time cute girl hairstyles, which are Mormon. Um, And they've kind of branched off a little bit because the girls are older now into Brooklyn and Bailey. And they have a shit ton of followers they have a huge following um and they're relatively young i mean i don't know how old they are i don't follow them but i would say early 20s max um and lots of people kind of question whether i think bailey's the one that just got married again i don't follow these people so i don't know who they are (laughs) but one of them just got married to somebody who's not a member is what i'm understanding based on the reddit post that i was reading so one of them just married a non-member so McKay will throw up this picture. This is her in her wedding dress. It's gorgeous. She looks beautiful. Um, this is obviously not a Mormon compatible wedding dress. So if she married a non-member and he didn't convert, they're not getting it married in the temple unless he converts. So it makes sense. That sounds like a win to me. It does sound like a win. So there's lots of questions. My understanding is from the subreddit about them is there's lots of questions about whether or not Bailey is still Mormon. Because one, she married a non-member, and two, she dresses, I would say 95% of what she wears is not compatible (laughs) with garments. Um, And mind you, these girls, these younger girls haven't been through the temple yet. So they don't wear garments. So the standards are a little bit less intense for them. However, um, based on the bikini story that we just told you two minutes ago, those standards, even though you're a teenager, still apply. Yeah. So, like, when I was in Young Women's, they told us to dress like we did have garments. When I was in Young Women's, you, even though you're not endowed, like even though you haven't been through the temple yet, you don't wear the garment, the, I would say, the not the boundaries, but the restrictions are just as intense for girls. The standards. Anyway. Nobody gives a shit about yeah. the boys and what they're wearing. Well, well, and they, they want you to live... Well, with us, it was like, oh, don't wear tank tops and things like that. Like, I never wore tank tops when I was a kid because of that. Even in the summer, I mean, it was sweltering, like, 100-degree heat out in Colorado, but never would I ever. And they want you to be, like, living in a way where it won't be such a shock to have to wear garments all the time suddenly. No short shorts. Shorts had to be to the knee. If your mom was the cool Mormon mom that let you, you were in the minority. Um no, like no booby shirts, no cleavage, um, and then leggings. Oh, leggings is always a huge. A thing. lot of Mormon moms got in a tizzy about leggings. Um, they leggings got popularity like my freshman sophomore year of high school, and so I wanted to wear them because all my friends were wearing them. But my mom would not let me wear leggings unless I had a shirt on that was long enough to cover my ass. So. Oh, and there was. Even in my own family, there was conversations about that, and in my own... And your dad was a bishop. <laughs> yeah, so... So this is common. Yeah. Teenage girls within the church get regulated quite a bit. There's plenty of people that I've interacted with that have commented, that have messaged us, that have had an interaction with a church member, a leader, a bishop, who have attended church in something and been told that their dresses weren't appropriate, what they were wearing was too revealing, um, mind you... Within Mormonism, it's taught that you have to, as a woman, have to keep yourself appropriate and modest to prevent boys from having inappropriate thoughts about you. Um, and that's kind of the basis of of why you need to dress appropriately. And the other hand of that is that, you know, you want to be respectful to God because your body's a temple um, and you don't want to defile it, including tattoos, piercings, anything of that nature. So, and we see, you know, there's not a ton of Mormon influencers with tattoos, but people if you're really more like if you're if you're an ex-mormon or you're heavily invested in the mormon community you'd know that having more than one piercing in your ear is also 
um, against the rules. There was a prophet who said, you can't have more than one. So even having that or a nose ring or more than one hole in your ear, um, like pierced hole in your ear, (laughs) um, is not allowed. So we've just listed 15 more ways that people are incompatible with Mormonism. But here's a picture of both Brooklyn and Bailey sitting, um, tank top, super short shorts. Neither of these outfits would be Mormon appropriate. Yeah, no. You wouldn't roll up to a young women's event seeing girls dressed like this. Absolutely not. Not a chance in hell. No way. Um, So, and again, they haven't been through the temple, so it's a little bit different. But those standards still apply. So people are watching this and they're like, oh, they're seeing this and they're like, maybe they're less intense with teenage girls. But I would argue they're just as intense with teenagers. It's the same. It's the same. And then you guys bring up this one a lot. I don't know much about her or what she does. I know they're like heavily Mormon. Um, This is Haley Devine. This is a picture of her with her husband and her kids. We'll blur out their faces so you can't see them. But um, in this post, (laughs) I was looking through her Instagram feed and she posted in this post right here saying that her husband just got called to be in the bishopric. Whoa. So they're, he's high up in that church leadership um, in his ward. So they're heavily invested in Mormonism. I went through all of her the majority of her Instagram posts, she's another example of an influencer, a Mormon influencer that you'd be hard pressed to find an inappropriate photo or an inappropriate outfit um, that's incompatible with garments. Inappropriate, obviously. In this context. In this context. I don't care. (laughs) I'm not going to define women's clothing as inappropriate or appropriate. I'm specifically talking within context of Mormonism as what would be found either way. Um, But her in particular, similar to the other ones we've talked about, no, nothing that would be like, oh my God, girl. What is going on? Like everything. If her bishop looked at her Instagram account, not a single thought would be given. There's not anybody in her ward who's going to be like, oh my gosh, she's wearing like revealing shit. Like none of that. Last but not least, we have Amber Filler up. Um, and she is a super popular Instagram influencer. Um, you will... She has a lot of things that it's winter, so things are more covered typically at this time. Yeah. However, she has a lot of, I mean, she looks good. She's got great boobs and she shows them off. But within the context of Mormonism, that's a no Not appropriate. Yeah. And she is, so she also has a, a blog, right? And, and she's addressed in a multiple, multiple part little blog post about, um, her experience with church and everything like that and um she's said before that she's okay with not wearing the garment and uh i just thought it was really funny this little piece right here she says how does david feel about you not wearing garments apparently that's a frequently asked that's a mormon question right there and she said one of the things i love most about david is that he just lets me be me for whatever that uh and and accepts me for whatever that is from day one of my journey with garments david has been 100 percent in support of whatever my heart and spirit is telling me he has never once took issue with it in any way shape or form and has been only been my supporter through this journey i'm not going to speak for david and his faith but he absolutely is in full support of me and i am always in full support of him so that is like a really weird concept that he like she's supposed to hearken to unto him as he bargains unto God. So he would be able to overrule her in theory on her decision. So that's why it's like a weird, or it's not like a weird in the Mormon context, but everybody else would be like, that's weird that people would ask what your husband feels about that because who cares? That's a very Mormon question. Right. And a lot of them do this, like in Amber's case, she has like a whole section of her of her website that talks about, you know, how she feels about Joseph Smith and the LGBTQ yeah. plus community. And it's like, I feel like they do it on purpose to make sure that if people, you know, if people are interested enough to look at it, she's like, my opinion on this Cover is different ass. from the church. Yeah. So when people like us are like, hmm. And obviously th- there's not much wrong with her she's not really problematic or anything it's just funny that when people are like what do you think about joseph smith and polygamy that she can just say i think polygamy is really weird and i don't like to think about it to be honest well that's 
That's for convenient for the, you. Uh, isn't previously it? mentioned uh, reason that is really convenient. Yep. So we've talked a lot about garments and among other things, but really emphasis on the garments. So let's talk about what they are: the magic underwear. And we, I actually dug some of ours out of the closet. I have not gotten rid of them. Because I was like, yeah, I'm waiting for a fire to burn them. But that's exactly how you're supposed to dispose of them. So I've so just we're just going to keep them. <laughs> we're either going to keep them to show them off to other people as instructional purposes. Or put them in the garbage because that's not how you're supposed to dispose of them. Correct. The garbage. Anyway, let's take a look at these real quick. We're just going to show them and kind of uh, go through some things. First off, like we said, you do not get... You're not instructed to wear the garment until you are old enough to serve a mission at the earliest or get married or unless um, you have permission yeah unless you have permission and usually that permission won't come out until you're at least 18 so when you go to the temple for the first time and we'll probably talk about other temple things in subsequent installments of videos um, but the first thing that you have to do is what's called the initiatory so the initiatory is the first in the three big um, kind of rituals that they do in the Mormon temple. Um, so you go into this room, it's partitioned off into four different sections, I guess three. Um, they sim now symbolically wash and anoint you and like bless you. If you're a man that's going, or I won't get into that. Um, but one of the parts is receiving the new name in the last little cubicle and receiving the garment. So they... Nowadays, you just have the garment on underneath your clothing. When I went through... You put it on for the first time in the temple. Yeah. You put it on... You take it to the temple. You put it on for the first time in the temple. And then the, when I went through, you would strip down, put on your garments, and put on this weird poncho thing that they call the shield. Um, and that's even different from what Jordan got like a and year I was or only two later. A year or two later. They used to be completely nude. Yeah. When they did this. Completely. And they would touch and, you, wash you, anoint you. And that's not even like that long ago. Like my parents got that treatment. So it's so they've changed evolved. a lot. <laughs> yeah. So that you're not. When I went being through there was no poncho. The, there was yeah. no you just you put Worn your garments your on, clothes. you put your temple dress on, and then yeah. they symbolically. Yeah. So um when they address that, this is the uh, the text that they're supposed to read. Brother or sister blank, having authority, I place this garment upon you, um, which you must wear throughout the rest of your life. It represents the garment given to Adam when he was found naked in the garden and is called the garment of the holy priesthood. That's where that name comes from. And as much as you do not defile it by altering committing it. sins and altering it and things like that, but are true and faithful to your covenants, it will be a shield and a protection to you against the power of the destroyer until you have finished your work on the earth. That may have changed a little bit recently because there have been some changes to the text that they're supposed to recite um, that I am not sure what exactly they changed. Um, but you're instructed. But that's, that's what, what you're instructed to do. Yeah. And then it goes a step further. So you're given... These are the garments. There's different ones for men and women. They come in a bunch of different fabrics and cuts and none of them are comfortable. <laughs> I don't know how. I used to wear these. They're like a cotton poly blend that I wore all throughout my mission. Um, they have this ugly ass little scoop neck, which is how you can garment check people, especially dudes. It's like telltale sign. If you have a t-shirt on, super easy to spot. Um, all the garments, both for men and women, have little cut. I, you probably we can't really see them. They're not cut. They're sewn in symbols that represent the covenants that you make in the endowment. And we'll probably explain those when we talk about that. Um, but you have a top piece and a bottom piece. These ones were the probably they're weird. Cause they're like two different fabrics. This was the, the newest iteration and they actually had silk screened symbols in them. So they weren't so obvious. Um, the women's were absolutely uh, the worst. Yeah, so they don't, I don't know if they do this with all of them now, but the the symbols used to be like sewn in the outside, essentially. Yeah. So like if you were wearing like a really tight shirt, you could see the outline of the symbols through your shirt, um, which is 
as a woman, it was really annoying. So this is what the the Mormon top looks like for women. This is one of the different styles. It's a square neck. Um, you'll notice the cap sleeves. And so this goes pretty far down your arm. Um, so tank tops and like really short capped tops would not be compatible yeah. um, with this. The, the other part of this that's super annoying is the cleavage piece. So even if you had a t-shirt or like a shirt that I was like when I was Mormon that I would wear that wasn't inappropriate, a lot of times just this little piece would just kind of fall out or stick out a little bit. So they're really difficult to like, even if you're wearing appropriate they're, clothing, they're super identifiable too, because yes. they're like frilly little. Um, it's like lacy, lacy type looking thing. It's not cute. It's ugly. But. It's not. And so even when you're wearing things that are compatible with garments, I mean, you're still subject to have things like Poking sticking out. out. So even when fit. you're being good, it's difficult. Yeah. So that's the top. Um, ugly. And then these are the bottoms, the same thing. I wore the spandex ones. Um, so they're more like, they're more like leggings. They're, they're yeah. super tight. Um, and that's why for a lot of Mormons, you can garment check, like if they're wearing leggings or something, because it's so tight, that it'll create that kind of edge, um, that you can see. And then there's also, I had the regular ones, but then I started wearing the petite garments because if you wear the petite ones, they come up a little bit shorter. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of Mormons will do that because um, they come up a little bit higher on your on your thigh. So you can kind of get away with wearing things that are a little a little shorter, shorter. Yeah. But still, even if you because I would roll garments up sometimes if I was wearing something <gasps> shorter, Adjusting. they don't last like they don't last like that. Plus, it's super uncomfortable. So they'll they'll roll down or the sleeves will roll down. Like it's really difficult to alter them unless you're like legitimately like taking scissors and yeah, <laughs> making alterations. For sure. So that's what they look like. Yeah, and, and like I, I used to work at the distribution warehouse, and there was like all kinds of, they come in a whole bunch of different sizes and uh, fabric types, and there's a couple different cuts. Like if you're a man, you can get a crew neck one, which is just dumb, because if you, if you wear a t-shirt, then you've got essentially two t-shirt collars right on your your collar bone area and um they also have one pieces or they used to i don't know if they do they anymore. still do they still do people buy them still one piece garments like one piece garment onesie. like a onesie yeah all the way from your shoulders down to your knees at the very least well and they have like full length garments too if you just want the bottoms because my mom had those yeah they have long ones we're like just it doesn't stop at the knee like it goes, it goes all the way, all way to your ankle. ankle yeah they have those too so there, there's a bunch, and, and they're all uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> they're all the worst. I, I mean, I used to work in a tire shop, and again, it would get hot as shit in the summer. Like, to the point where I went against my faith and stopped wearing the top because my chest would get so broken out from just working in the heat with this shirt under my work shirt, which was very breathable, by the way. And it was a big deal when he considered doing that. Like it was something yeah, that we talked about. I felt about. bad. My Mormon coworkers, I didn't want to tell them because I felt like they would be judging me. So, and this is anecdotal experience, but I can't imagine that this is anything that's really that out there for the run of the mill Mormon temple garment wearer. Anyway, so it's a big deal. And so when you're, a regular Mormon and you're seeing people on the internet that are like, Oh, I just, I've received revelation that I, I don't really need to wear the garment. You're or like, it's a personal what the choice fuck? for me. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck? Cause it is not a personal choice for me. And here's why we're going to start. We're going to read some stuff. This is from, I wanted to hit specifically on the missionary handbook that I used to read on a monthly basis so that we were always knowing what the rules were and following the rules and make sure you don't disobey the rules um, about the garments. So the missionaries are wearing these, and this is what they're taught about it. I'll just put up this, uh, this excerpt right here. Wearing the temple garment. Wearing the temple garment is a, the sacred privilege of those who have taken upon themselves the covenants of the temple. The garment is a consistent or a constant reminder of these covenants, when worn properly, it provides protection against the temptation, uh, uh, temptation and evil. Endowed members should wear the garment both day and night, according to the instructions given in the endowment. 
You should not adjust the garment or wear it contrary to instructions in order to fit different styles of clothing. And uh, even when such clothing may be generally acceptable. Boom. Boom. Let's stop there for a minute. Not altering. Even when it's a per, like even when it's modern, traditional, or going yeah. on popular clothing styles. Nope. You're not supposed to alter it. Don't alter it. When two piece garments are used, both pieces should always be worn. And that was a problem with me because um, I didn't have any other underwear when I was working. So I would only wear the bottoms, not the top. Well, and this might be something that Mormon influencers do, too, because the top of their outfit might be appropriate so they can wear the half, but they can't wear the the other half. So that's also an issue. Why? I, I feel like the bottom is so much more convenient because what other underwear do you have? It's true. Um, you should not remove either entirely or partially the garment or activities that should, could be reasonably done with the garment worn properly under clothing, nor should you remove it to lounge around in your quarters. Quarters? What? (laughs) Who says that? When you must remove the garment, you should put it back on as soon as possible. The garment should never be left on the floor. When garments need to be washed, they should be placed in a laundry basket or bag until they can be properly washed and dried. As you can, um, anyway. So that's I think the it. important piece about that one too is when you remove the garment, you should put them on. You should put them back on as soon as possible. Yeah. Like even this isn't like swimming doctrinal base, but with examples like swimming, um, there are some Mormons who won't do yard work. There's there's some who will. Um, with the garments on same goes for exercise like you'll see with a lot of these mormon influencers that they don't wear any clothing while exercising that would be compatible with garments which could go either way there's a lot of mormons who feel it is their obligation to wear that area even with exercising and so that one's more of a gray area but um but you can see how important it is because they're like don't even let it be on the the floor. floor like I had a, a little laundry bag that I would suspend in my closet and that way it was not touching the floor or anything. I would just put them in there and then I would wash them Are because I thought alarms it was, going off. Yeah. <laughs> like, can you imagine like you, you don't put your, and maybe you shouldn't put your clothes in on the floor in general because then it's just messy, but, but it's based on the sacred nature of the garment. Like it is yeah. so sacred that it should not touch the floor. Period. Yeah. And like there's even there's even some other cultural things around garments. Like you're not supposed to wash garments with any other clothing. Like it's solely <laughs> supposed to be that, garments. I'm trying to save water. <laughs> so there's a lot of people who won't even allow it to be washed with other clothing. So the whole nature of the garment is ext- is extremely sacred. And people are going to be like, oh, that's ironic because you're talking about it right now. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about how sacred it is to us because we're not Mormon anymore. Yeah. But in the examples of what we're talking about, it's supposed to be this intensely sacred thing. And so there's even cultural things around sex. Like there's some Mormons that'll tell you that they have sex with their partner and then they immediately put their garments on afterwards. Or worse, with it on. There's some old people who used to do that. Some some people. Trust me, it's weird. So part of the the handbook too that they talk about is that you're not supposed to have any of the garments exposed. And so I think some people get confused because they're like, well, why couldn't you just wear the garment even if it was sticking out just a little bit? The church instructs you that you're not supposed to allow it show. People aren't allowed to see it because they won't respect the significance of the garment and it's you know one it causes it to probably be a little revealing even though not really and two it's so sacred that they don't want people seeing it because then they're like oh my god mormons are weird so there's that piece and then they're also super culty about how you dispose of the garments which mckay just touched on that a minute ago yeah when you dispose of them when you like if they tear when you don't you know if you're getting new ones whatever you're supposed to cut out the symbols So all the symbols that we just showed you, there's three on top, there's one on the bottom. You have to cut those out and then you can throw them away. Um, If you burn them, you can leave them on because obviously for obvious reasons. But even the way you dispose of them is very specific. It's yeah, it's weird. So for most Mormons, these are the only underwear you have. It's the only under literally. When I, when we decidedly stopped, we were like, no more, we're done. I had to go and buy regular ass like underwear because I literally had nothing else. Yeah. Even after we stopped, we decided to stop. I had to wear it for a couple of days because I didn't get around to going to the store to get something. Like these and are what you have. I didn't even know what to get, what my preferences were because all I knew was just stuck to your skin garments. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And somebody, I'm sure, I don't think I addressed it before. Some people will ask about the bra can be over or under. Um, older women, like my mom's generation and older, will, were told by the temple patrons that it had to be over. over. So you would put the garment on first and then you would put the bra on over it. Yeah, let me tell you, that's weird. Hella swoob. Hella weird. Hella so <laughs> just imagine that for a moment. But for the younger generations, um, they've told you it doesn't matter. And so I always wore my bra underneath with the garment top over because that was less weird. And less weird, uncomfortable. But less weird. <laughs> less bunching. Yeah. Yeah. And writing up and shit like that. Yeah. So. More like, you know, you know, but that that's kind of the gist of it is there is garments are intense and it. It is a unique and extremely important aspect to being Mormon. And that's the garments are a big yeah. reason of why Mormonism stands out. And the Mormon church likes it that way. Like they don't hide the garments anymore. Just like they don't really hide the ceremonial clothing anymore. You can find it on their website. So it's much yeah. less of a taboo thing now. And they it came to light and they aren't changing it, at least for the foreseeable future. And so why is it a requirement? Okay. Because it is a reminder of the covenants that you make during the endowment ritual or ceremony, whatever you want to call it. But what if I don't wear them? What will happen? Well, I had an interesting little, I don't remember when it was or on what video it was, little um, interaction with somebody who said, no, I am a Mormon. They do not ask you if you wear your temple garment. And I was like... What? Are you sure about that? <laughs> Coming in with the receipts, right? Of course. So that's just false. And bless their heart, they were a newly endowed person. They hadn't had another Temple Recommend interview up to that point, so they were not in the know. Um, but it is one of the questions that they ask you when they ask you uh, or when you do a Temple Recommend interview. It is an explicit question. Here is a um, a little entry from the church newsroom when they updated some of the questions. This is the most up to date list of questions that they have. It's the one in there right now. Yeah, 2019. Um, do you keep the covenants you made in the temple, including wearing the temple garment as instructed in the endowment? That's number 13. That is one of the questions that they ask you. If you say no, it is up to the bishop's discretion. If they want to give you, extend you a temple recommend so you can return to the temple or not, that is totally up to the bishop at that point. And mind you, the temple recommend is sort of one of the pinnacles of Mormonism because every prophet, every church leader tells you that you need to have an active temple recommend at all times. And so if you're not wearing the you garments, you be worthy of it at all times. At all times. And so if you're not wearing the garments and you answer no, a bishop would be, would have exact cause for not issuing you a temple recommend so not wearing the garments could cause you to lose your temple recommend yep and that would essentially be equated to you are sinning yeah and that that might be a kind of an extrapolation of the idea but you're not worthy to go into the, the lord's temple. house what they is what they call it which would mean you're i mean you're sin you're sinning you're that's sinning. what they would define yeah. it as that's so, not what we think but that's what they would define it as yeah so it's not just this thing that people can th this is what the church says and i'm pretty sure that would trump you feeling that it's not really important because the here, church thinks it's important here's what it comes down to when you get your garments you're instructed to wear it day and night you're instructed to never alter it never let it touch the floor and you're instructed to wear it all the time. All the time. Even when you take them off, you're supposed to immediately put them back on. So there's really not, there's a very short list of times where you shouldn't be wearing your garments. Yes. A very, very short list. And that doesn't include not wearing them because it doesn't go with your outfit. Okay? So we're not here to bash on anybody who doesn't wear them. However, if you are going to tout yourself as a Mormon and you're going to put that on your profile and you're going to commit, you're going to defend those beliefs to people. When people come for you in your comment section, other people are going to defend you. You're going to talk about it. If you're going to put disclaimers on your website saying that you don't, you don't do this or you, you don't, don't do, do it or you don't, you have personal revelation. 
you're being misleading about Mormonism. Yeah, it's not the Mormonism that the masses practice. So here's the deal is it comes down to bishops, right? You got Bishop Roulette with who you get. So either these people aren't really active Mormons, even though they say they are, or they're Mormon adjacent, or they're not really they Mormon, but they still are Mormon, Sunday. kind of. Yeah. Um, that could be the reason why this is happening. It also could be that their bishop isn't aware of what they're wearing if they're not wearing it to church. They're, a lot yeah. of bishops don't follow people on Instagram. Around, yeah. So it, you're, it's on the honor system when you do this, because obviously when a lot of these influencers go to church, they're dressed appropriately. Yep. And so it's kind of on the honor system. But I think the whole point of this is if you're a Mormon and you went to the temple and you got endowed and you understand the sacred nature of the garments and what they mean. The intense. And the covenants, which are the most important aspect of Mormonism. If the you, secret handshakes. The secret handshakes. If you you covenant to do those things, you promise on your life that you will live by those rules. You used to slit your own throat to promise yep. that you would do those things. You would pantomime that. Fun fact. So that's how intense they are about these things. And so if you truly understand all of those things and you consider yourself Mormon, then it's kind of questionable. That's weird. Yeah. Really what this, what we want to drive home is that it's not what these people are painting it out to be. It's it's so much more intense. They are misrepresenting what it means and and what it and takes. And it's not like, oh wow, these people are no true Scotsmen. They're not real Mormons. It's just a- allowing people to think that it's not as bad as it is. <laughs> well, and, Mormon- and people will be like, oh, well, I should read the Book of Mormon or whatever because it seems harmless at face value there's only one verse that talks about the white and delightsome people as opposed to the skin of blackness and that was changed and and there's a reason that the church won't come out and condemn these people and that reason right there is why because these mormon influencers make mormonism more palatable they make it appear not weird they make it seem not cringy like these mormon influencers they and they might not even realize they're doing this but they're drawing people in and causing them to look at mormonism and they're doing it in a way that promotes mormonism in a really positive light and in an accurate light because some people might be like yeah the garments are weird for me like that's the one weird aspect of mormonism that i don't like and then they see all these mormon influencers who don't wear them and then they're like oh well i can just not wear i can just not wear them and i could still believe the things that the mormons believe and it's like yeah it's not how it works well and it's not like it will go without consequence because they're like the leadership in the church when they see that people like if you got denied your temple recommend because you don't wear the garment they're actively campaigning to make sure that all people go to the temple they want people to go to the temple because that's what brings in the tithes so they're going to do whatever they can to hey will you wear your garment you're supposed to wear the garment i want you to come back to the temple so we can make sure that you're paying your tithing and and it's not like especially here in utah it's not like you make a six month one trip trek to the temple for a lot of people that live in other countries or states where they don't have temples that's that's true going to the temple is kind of an infrequent thing but a lot of these influencers live here in utah where there's a temple every 10 minutes (laughs) yeah there's a deseret book down the street where you can buy these so it's not like you're you don't have the opportunity to go to the temple frequently like you should be keeping up on that temple recommend because a lot of mormons here go every week yeah, it's crazy. And it, the whole garment thing is so weird. People, let me tell you, when I worked at that distribution warehouse, Christmas got so f-ing crazy because people gift garments for Christmas, which is... That's weird, first that of all. That is just weird. Weird, just don't so do that. so crazy. So it, it's like a big cultural item, and it's not... It's based around this super, super intense belief that you have to wear this at all times and it says that it's a protection from evil and temptation but there are oh my god i could not i could fill a whole video just talking about all of the tall tales i've heard of 
of people who have worn the garment and they got stabbed and with a knife and there was only a hole through their garment and they didn't get cut or anything like all that. All kinds of crazy and shit like that. Or they got shot and it, they the got bullet shot. didn't oh go through. Oh my God. Like, like, kind of crazy shit. Yeah. And it's always my brother's friends, cousins, wife's missions, companions, husband, like nobody that's verifiable. No. There's no way that any of that shit happens. So to sum it all up, I think, and we only hand, we only talked about a handful um, of influencers. We're not like yeah. targeting these people specifically. Um, this isn't like a bash on Mormon influencers type thing. Um, you're going to get called out for shit. That's just what it is. But I think these are just a few examples. But I think the whole sum up point is, is if you're a Mormon influencer and you're kind of watering down Mormonism a little bit. It's not fair to your followers. It's not fair. It's a misrepresentation of the religion and the requirements of the religion. And you're indirectly causing harm. You're indirectly causing harm by just being Mormon. But you're also indirectly causing harm by misrepresenting what Mormonism is and the requirements. Because at the end of the day, this is Mormonism. That's what it is. It's so, a unique part of Mormon Mormonism. So don't be trying to display it as it's not weird. We just believe these things and, you know, you can just believe those things. We just and love Jesus and we listen to the prophet. And if that was great. a lot more than that. If that's where it ended, then great. But it's not. It's not. And this is just the tip of the fucking iceberg. So don't. You're drawing in people. If you're trying to, like, not advertise, but if you're trying to draw people in who aren't members, you're doing it under false pretenses. Which is gross. Which so is gross. don't do that. Leave the church. Don't wear garments anymore. That's my advice. Yeah. Wear whatever the hell you want. I don't care. 90% of these influencers are adorable. I don't give a shit what you wear. But that last thing that we just said, that's the problem. So, magic underwear. I mean, there's a thousand jokes we could make about that, but... um it's weird. Um, anyway, we'll probably... We got a good response from the uh, the last video about uh, the dating horror stories. We probably need to go a little harder on the men. <laughs> so we'll, we'll probably revisit that at some point. Um, if you liked what you hear, hit subscribe or uh, whatever the equivalent is. Follow or, uh, on your podcast pr platform. Um, if you want to check us out, you can... Uh, find our socials at jordan and mckay on tiktok and instagram we've been posting more on tiktok it's been pretty cool um if you want to support us in another way you can check out our patreon you can go to jordan uh, or patreon.com slash jordan and mckay you can also join our discord if you're listening on a podcast platform come and find the description to get the link for that and you can chat with us and stuff like that and you can also find the links to our Teespring and our Etsy stores. We've got some cool stuff on both of those cool designs that are really cool. That was right on. Any any parting words, Jordan? Any parting <laughs> wisdom? No. I think this was comprehensive. It's probably going to be one of our longer ones. Yeah. So if you stuck around, great. Um, that's kind of the... We're longer people. We're talkers. If you don't we're like talkers. it, don't stick around. That's fine. Yeah. Anyway, if you stuck around, thank you, and we'll see you next time.